Becoming a digital marketing data analyst in these modern times is actually one of the best opportunities in my mind. A lot of digital marketers achieve a plateau in terms of their income and earnings. And that's just because of the industry, because of what their job and company are willing to pay. And one of the best decisions I made was making the leap from being a digital marketer to becoming a digital marketing data analyst, which has allowed me to up level my income, reach that next level and just see a very significant difference in terms of the freedom that I have and the opportunities I have, as well as the creativity and uh, stuff I could do at work. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, how you can become a digital marketing data analyst in this uh, modern era, this year. So there is a roadmap, a blueprint that I want to lay out for you. And I think it starts with understanding where you're at now so you can see where you stand on that roadmap and then move along the timeline to getting one. Now, you may be someone who is already a digital marketer. Maybe you spent a few years working at an agency, maybe in-house, and you like it, but you are just ready and itching to level up. Uh, I remember I was there and I just felt like I had plateaued. I wasn't even making that much, but um, I'd gotten the raises and uh, opportunities I could within that agency. But you know how agencies are. They just really don't pay well, even if you are more of a senior level and you just feel like you're capped out. You know, the, the company is just not willing to budge, even if you do like a salary raise type of negotiation meeting. That's one part of this roadmap. Or you may be at the very beginning where you're just out of college, you're a fresher, you're a new grad, and your game plan is to get to where I am now as a digital marketing data analyst. So how do you get there? Now, first, as a disclaimer, this is not the same thing as a data analyst. This job has different names. It's, it's a new emerging role. It, I would say it's a subset of a data analyst, but it's more focused on understanding various marketing tools, analytics tools. It's very similar to a data analyst, but the difference is that you don't need as much programming uh, or coding knowledge. It's more so about understanding and being able to use all the analytics tools uh, and related tools to track and collect custom metrics report on that and then build charts, reports, dashboards to report on important numbers and analytics to leadership, just how they want it in real time, all that stuff. So to get to that point, we really need to become kind of a master of these skill sets. There's no way around that. You're not going to really succeed by not deserving that success. And to deserve that success, you can't fib your way around it or try and escape actually learning these skills at some point. So on the start of this timeline, what you really need to be able to do is you need to be able to go from not knowing any of these skills to getting to a basic foundation, uh, a fundamental level, maybe a beginner to intermediate level with all the skills necessary. Um, and those skills in involve analytics tools. They involve uh, a bit of light programming, SQL. They involve Google Analytics. They involve tag management, web tag management tools. They involve uh, data visualization tools like Google Looker Studio. And so to get these tools and skill sets, um, some of it you can learn for free, but uh, there's a big difference between theory and then reality. It's kind of like reading books on how to play basketball and then actually playing basketball to learn. The books can only get you so far. So in that vein, I really think that, you know, certain things like SQL, um, you can kind of learn it on your own because uh, many courses come with a bunch of exercises that is kind of like playing basketball. You know, you get the theory, but you also get to play basketball a bit by coding certain things. But other things like Google Analytics, or Google Tag Manager, those are things that like, it's so much better to get like real client experience to really start to be able to use those tools. And uh, you know, it's not that easy to get. So if you get those opportunities, really seize them, really raise your hand and say, I wanna do this. Um, because 
you know, once you're at an agency, you'll be surprised. There'll be other uh, coworkers there offer the same opportunities and they won't raise their hand because they are just happy to be there. They don't have any forward thinking game plan. So you can snatch up those opportunities. So exactly how do you get that first internship? Some of you are already there. Um, so you may be able to skip past this step in this roadmap, but for those who are just you know, maybe out of college, brand new, how do you get your foot in the door in something like this and what should you do? Well, I think anything is good, but preferably I really think your best bet if you can is working at an agency and you can get an internship first. I think that's one of the hacks to getting a job. Many agencies will pick first from their pool of interns. Um, they won't hire all interns. It's not a guarantee, but in my experience, we had an internship program at our agency, uh, my first agency I worked at, and uh, I would say a good portion, uh, maybe like 50% of interns, the really good ones were picked out and offered full-time jobs. So that's an easy way in where you get to learn and you can even do this part-time while in school. A lot of our interns were still in college while getting paid for their internship and getting mentored and experience. So your focus at the beginning at this step is not on making as most, the most money as possible. It should be on getting as much experience and skill set to use these tools as possible. The way I did it was kind of unique in the sense that, well, I saw many others get internships. I was able to get just a, a job out of the gate, out of college. It wasn't easy. I spent about a year to a year and a half searching and hunting for jobs before I got this. Um, but uh, eventually I was able to interview very well. I was able to point to some special projects I did on my own where I was able to uh, accrue a, a lot of views for some social media, for some blogs I built and point to that as my special projects that other competitors didn't have when I applied for that job. And through that, I was able to get my first entry level job. Did it pay well? No, but I didn't care because it got my foot in the door. And man, did it really open up a lot. At that job, um, not only were we working with various different clients that were constantly being shuffled in and out, so I got so much experience from different angles, different situations, but I also got uh, access to various different accounts owned by various different companies, small, big, mid-sized, different industries. And I got to play with their Google Analytics accounts. I got to play with their Google Tag Manager accounts, do SEO, get access to their Google Ads pay-per-click account. And then um, sometimes like you only get view-only access or you can't tamper with anything in there. And even then it's fine because you can see the numbers flow. You can see what's, what's working, what's not. And you get to tinker with it and you learn from these clients what business questions they actually care about and then you get to plot those things create reports on that and man that just up levels your skill set way faster than someone who's just working in-house for just one company or someone who's just using theory alone because they have no companies they're working for they're just self teaching themselves so i highly recommend getting your foot in the door at an agency I don't think it's as hard as people make it out to be. It's not easy, but it's certainly not as hard as becoming a rocket scientist or neurosurgeon. So I really think it is possible. There's uh, a few YouTube channels I know who kind of teach you how to do this. Seth Jared is one of them. So there's other channels that uh, specialize in just helping you get your foot in the door at a digital marketing agency. Uh, but then fast forward to the next path in that timeline, which is where you just feel like you plateaued. Um, I spent five years at that agency and just hit a complete level of comfort there that I think was, was dangerous looking back. But um, I hit a point where I was like, you know what, this is probably as good as it gets. I'm comfortable. I don't make a lot, but you know, it's enough to get by. And um, looking back, I really am so glad that the series of events happened that snapped me out of it because I was, 100% locked into a, a mindset where I literally felt like, yeah, 
I'm just going to live and, and do this job for the rest of my life. And it would have been a okay existence. It wouldn't have been exciting or amazing, but it would have been all right. You know, I just hit that level of comfort there. And uh, I, I think, you know, many people do. Some of my coworkers uh, probably had that same thing. And um, the issue was I wasn't growing. My income wasn't growing. My excitement towards life wasn't growing and all this stuff. And long story short, through a series of events, which started with me uh, looking to get a raise and then getting denied that raise, um, it led to me to start exploring and hunting other jobs, which ultimately led me to do a lot of networking and then eventually get referred to this one job I have now as a senior digital marketing data analyst, uh, which I've been working for three years now. And it really has opened the doors on so many levels, inside and outside of work. It allowed me to escape my hometown, which was more of like a slow paced area. And which I, I thought was, I was probably, I was, like I said, thought I was doomed to confined in for the rest of my life. But because my new job was remote friendly, boom, I could finally escape that part of the area. I got to do a, some, some traveling before, you know, I settled down and I was able to see various different states while working. Um, and then, you know, obviously my income uh, was much better. So that really just helped me live a better life and then explore the, the beauty of the world. But then even within the work itself, it was, you know, rather than doing the same things, because at that point, I had stopped growing as well. I was doing a lot more teaching than I was learning because I was more senior at my first agency job, uh, having been there for five years. So you probably, maybe you're in a similar boat where you're just like, you know, I'm, I'm not learning anything. If anything, I'm just teaching new recruits how to do everything. And it's just, you know, very routine. It's, it's, it's almost mind numbing at this point. That could be a time for a, a sign, multiple signs that it's, it's time for you to jump into that next level. So I had like the perfect, or I wouldn't say perfect, but a really good skill set where you could now jump to that next level um, because I have all these things I could po point to on my resume. And that's exactly what they were looking for. They were looking for people who had Google Tag Manager experience, Google Analytics 4 experience, maybe some you know, experience uh, you know, in Looker Data Studio or a different data visualization tool like Tableau or Power BI. These are common things that these type of jobs are looking for. So those are the things you need to hone in on and find jobs even if it's not at an agency, even if it's in-house, find those stepping stone jobs that will train you in those skill sets. And then boom, once you apply for those, those, those uh, analyst positions, you're probably going to be one of the only few people to have those skills. A lot of people apply to these jobs, but most of them are just like not qualified or at least not qualified enough. So uh, don't be intimidated by the amount that apply. It's really the quality candidates that really matter. And so um, I was able to leverage all that point to it. And the biggest thing was in my job interviews, I was able to speak confidently and in detail with how I use these tools to prove that I wasn't just lying about these. Because anyone can lie and say I have this on the resume. But when they actually drilled in and I could speak specifically to how I would use these tools, um, boom. I, I was able to convince them, hey, give this guy a chance. Uh, I could also speak to a lot of client experience I had over the years and all the different clients I'd work with. And that came as another tremendous benefit to me being able to get my foot in the door in that job. And uh, once I got the job, um, the, the fun doesn't end there. The, you can't just relax there because um, many people make the mistake of just relaxing. And then I've seen this happen. They, they lose their jobs in the first three months. So you also have to focus on keeping your job. So I think, you know, there's, there's a few points where I would recommend you can relax, uh, you can celebrate. Uh, that's one is momentarily after you get the job offer and you accept it. That's a big hurdle. Enjoy, celebrate, but then get right back into it. And then like, you know, get back to work, prove that you, you deserve the job. The next milestone is three months in. Um, and then the next one's probably like six months in. Uh, or a year in. I actually didn't celebrate until like a year in because, you know, I've certainly seen people who have made it to like almost a year and then been let go. 
and then the next one's probably like two years and then three years in. So those are the big points where you can celebrate, where you can put your feet back and relax, but you don't want to do it too soon. And so, you know, yeah, you gotta keep in mind, employers are human too. They're trying to find the right fit and sometimes they don't. And then they have to do the unfortunate thing of letting someone go. So you, once, you, once I was in that job, I, I actually still did some self-learning on the side, you know, a few hours every week to really brush up on the skills I was lacking because um, I was honest during the job interview. I said, I do have Google Tag Manager experience, but I'm not a expert at this, this uh, skill set. And uh, they were still willing to give me a chance knowing that. Once I had the job, um, I, you know, was, was vigilant. I, I stayed in touch with my manager and asked, what skill sets do you think I still need to flesh out? Do you, do you still think I need to, to hone? And uh, one of them that came up was Google Tag Manager. And uh, lo and behold, I really dedicated myself to fleshing that out. I was successful in doing that. In fact, that was a skill set that not only did I get a lot of client experience in, but there's so many free tutorials online. I really love the ones by the YouTube channel, Measure School, Analytics Mania, and Loves Data. Um, and my, my God, they, they will teach you anything you need to know about Google Tag Manager. So. Uh, through their free resources, I was able to get to a intermediate and now probably advanced level with Google Tag Manager. And through that, um, I was able to keep my job and excel at my job. So um, that's really the roadmap. It's one, you're starting with nothing. Two, you get those basic skills. You get your foot in the door at a stepping stone job, uh, preferably an agency. So you get a bunch of experience. You stay there, but not for too long. You don't get too comfortable. And then you jump to that senior level where things really just start to open up, but don't, you don't relax just yet. You double down and then you, you triple down and just flesh out those skills and really prove with your work that you deserve and you deserve to stay at that company. And then you have those three months, six months, one year and two year milestones where you can really kind of, you know, celebrate. I would say even skip that six month one because you don't want to get too comfortable. I've seen people make that mistake. And then through that timeline, that is how you can get a job and learn how to become a digital marketing data analyst. Please leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Um, leave a comment uh, and let me know what video topic you want me to do next in the future. And then if you want more exclusive tips where I share nowhere else on how to get a job like this, please join my free email newsletter. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.